Tune in to SCSU Local. I'm your host, Nissan Brown. Hi, I'm Ramona Morozis. You're watching SCSU Local, news and events from across Minnesota brought to you locally. Tonight we have a lot of local events to bring to you. Later, Melissa K. Meyer sits down with a police officer and talks about how they work with St. Cloud State to help keep you safe. SCSU Local starts now. St. Cloud State has multiple outreach programs that look at how alcohol impacts the community. Rob Reef talks about the St. Cloud Community Alliance. My name is Rob Reff. I'm the Assistant Dean of Students for Chemical Health and Outreach Programming. I oversee multiple programs that look at uh, alcohol's impact on the community and safety from a community standpoint both on and off campus. So on campus I help oversee our YouChoose program which is our prevention program that helps, uh, it works directly with students to help uh, promote healthy use of alcohol and to help minimize uh, negative or high risk use of alcohol. And then I help oversee our impact program which is for adjudicated students. So students that have had uh, violations of the code of conduct we put them through educational programs to help make changes to their behavior. We have the uh, St. Cloud Community Alliance, uh, which was started a number of years ago that looked at bringing broad stakeholders together to address alcohol use within the community. Just a wider range of people that have come together to say, how can we make St. Cloud State, uh, I'm sorry, St. Cloud a better place and St. Cloud State University um, a better place that supports healthy use of alcohol and discourages or reduces high risk drinking. The St. Cloud Community Alliance was originally started as alcohol and it continues to be the primary focus. In part because, well there's a number of reasons. One, the grant that we won from the U.S. Department of Education two years ago was focused on alcohol and college students and that helped fund the initial coalition work. The other reason that it's focused on alcohol uh, is because it's an issue that this community has faced for a while and tried to reconcile. While its primary focus is alcohol, it also focuses on the negative associated factors. Crime is uh, partly an outcome of high-risk drinking. Criminals um, tend to prey on people who are vulnerable uh, and students and non-students who are coming home from the bars severely intoxicated tend to be easier prey for criminals and so and also students that are coming home and non-students that are coming home intoxicated aren't locking their doors, they're not locking their windows. I mean so uh, I don't want to blame the victim but part of it is is if we can reduce the alcohol use um, some of that crime will go down. Now there's also crime that's directly related to alcohol use so fights and other things from intoxicated individuals. So again crime isn't the primary thing we're looking at, it's alcohol. Well, we're extremely fortunate uh, here in this community because we have such a good relationship with the police. We've presented at a number of national conferences and not a lot of universities in the country have such a strong and helpful relationship. Um, the police are advocates for the university and especially our students and their job is to keep um, the city safe but um, they work really closely with us to keep uh, our university students and faculty and staff safe as well. So they really are dedicated to our students here on campus. I'm Melissa K. Meyer sitting here with Sergeant Jeff Oxton, who is another member of the St. Cloud Community Alliance and in charge of the Community Crime Impact Team for the St. Cloud Police. Thank you, Jeff, for being here today. No problem. So when did the collaboration with St. Cloud Police and St. Cloud State start? What I would say is probably when President Potter came. Uh, one of the things he did when he came here approximately five years ago now is that he made it one of his goals to create a better atmosphere or relationship between the city uh, of St. Cloud uh, and probably more specifically the community right around St. Cloud State University. So from that, that developed a relationship with the mayor who then a partnership you know, started, uh, the mayor embraced that and that uh, the chief you know, built on that and that actually brought my team back to life again. So about four years ago the Community Crime Impact team came back. About 30 percent of our time is dedicated to working with St. Cloud State. So how does this collaboration benefit the community and students? 
I think what it does is it really uh, is, again, a collaboration. And what that means is it includes all those people. It includes the community. It includes the students. It includes uh, university representatives. It includes the police. It includes other parts of the city to work together to identify problems and then, more importantly, identify solutions to those problems and, and try that. And, and hopefully, we're seeing results. So what are three things that you've seen work for you um, with this collaboration? Well, first of all, it's just the partnership with the university. And, and probably one of the biggest things initially was the university starting to hold students accountable for off-campus behavior. Um, we, at their request, started giving our arrest information weekly to the university. They then would look at that, pick all of the students out that had been either cited or arrested for something, and then hold them accountable to the code of conduct, just as they would on campus, but now they're doing it off campus. Other things like us doing prevention walks with university representatives, um, where it's the police and the college or an administrator going and talking to people, spreading the word how to be safe, how to have a fun year, how to not get in trouble, doing those types of things, which before moving day we did 182 rental homes uh, off campus this year with that combination so it was a great effort. So what things in the past did you notice that haven't worked so well and what changes did you make to make those things work? Um, well, I think what typically has happened when you have a problem area where um, especially drinking issues are, are you know, really core, uh, a core to the problem was that it's always been focused on law enforcement. Law enforcement's been the solution and the only one really looked to to have a solution. We in law enforcement rely on enforcement, so it's heavy enforcement. Um, and that's what a lot of places do. That's what we've always done. That suppresses the problem, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't really um, make things get better. So um, we're working outside that box now and we're seeing results. What results are you seeing? Have you seen any, um, do you have data to? Oh yeah, we've seen uh, since uh, the social host ordinance went into effect, um, that, that was a huge addition to helping us and that was an accumulation of a whole bunch of efforts by a lot of people. Um, but we've seen loud parties drastically go down. Um, you know, running 60 parties or so a year, uh, you know, or I should say in the first month of the year, 60 parties for that first month. Now we're down to 28 this year. Um, and we saw a 25 percent reduction in 2000. Uh, 9 to 2010 in loud parties. Um, and so that's a big thing because loud parties correlate well with other crime like um, violent stuff, fights, assaults, people getting hurt, that type of thing. How does alcohol play such a big part with the St. Cloud Community Alliance? Well, the Community Alliance uh, has been brought in by Dr. Ref um, and through St. Cloud State and the grant that he got. And what it does is it really uh, lets the community take a look at the issue of alcohol and how it's affecting the community. Um, if you look at most of the bad things that have happened in the past, whether it be the riots of 89 or the move-in day events where a lot of people get into trouble, a lot of people get hurt, uh, really alcohol-centered. And so um, the Community Alliance looks at alcohol, but not just around St. Cloud State or around campus. It looks at it from a community-wide event, whether it's K through 12 issues, uh, downtown issues, um, all over the place. So, Is there any important information that you want students and the community members to know, specifically about drinking or partying on campus? Well, I just think that um, there's a strong correlation between those things and between other crime. And so I, I think we're starting to see some indicators that, um, again, some of the things like fights and assaults are, are dropping in correlation with parties dropping. So if we can be responsible, uh, I'm not saying not have fun, but be responsible uh, to all your neighbors, to yourselves, um, we'll start hopefully seeing a, a safer environment around here too. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. And we'll have more SESU Local after the break. Well, I first started skating with my friend. He had an extra board, and then he just gave it to me, and I've been skating ever since. Well, when I don't land a trick and I have my mind set on something and I'm not getting what I want, I just keep going for it until I get it right. Um, my mom, she didn't go to college, so she wants me to experience that whole thing, and so I could end up getting like a good job. Ah! I think to get into college, I'll have to be determined just like when I want to get a new trick, and skating's helped me realize I've got what it takes. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. 
I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. You could have done a little what? better. What? Come on! You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. I wouldn't have been at this ceremony if I hadn't been at this ceremony first. Unfortunately, nearly 30% of U.S. high school students aren't making it to graduation. And every one of us, every parent, every friend, and neighbor, has the responsibility to provide the support and encouragement they need to make it through. Because we all need to see a lot more of these pictures. Turning a 20-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. When the people of Haiti were hit by the massive earthquake, the people of America and the world came to their aid. President Clinton and I have seen firsthand the power of your contributions at work. The Clinton Bush Haiti Fund is on the ground, funding programs that create jobs, teach skills, and assist local businesses. Please continue to help us help the people of Haiti so they can rebuild and thrive. Thank, Thank you. you. Go now to ClintonBushHaitiFund.org or text QUAKE to 2222 to give $10. Welcome back to the show. We are all familiar with a food buffet, but have you ever been to an art buffet? In Atwood, students and professionals display their artwork and it's often called an art buffet. This is the fifth annual summer juried art exhibit and we did it as a trial five years ago and we've just done it every summer. And it's always up to the student committee. You know, I always say, should we do the juried summer exhibit again? And the guest book just reflects such wonderful comments. And people come in and it's just a pleasant surprise instead of one artist that's featured. They have 12 to 13 artists to see sort of a sampling. It's like a art buffet in a way you can go through. And if you don't care for one particular style, as you go down the wall and around the corner, there may be another style that appeals to you. You know, again, um, with the reflection of the comments in the guest book, I suppose we would quit having it if people said, this is awful, I don't like this at all. Because, you know, we do program, all our programs are for the campus and community. So we really take to heart the comments and reflections of what we exhibit. So I think with such favorable comments and the artists that exhibit in the show really enjoy it too because they have an opportunity to show at our university, but still it doesn't tie up with their whole body of work for an exhibit. My favorite one was uh, the one the dude in the, in the showers with holding the balloon, deflated balloon. Uh, it was very interesting, caught my eye, looked very 3D-ish, seemed like it was gonna come out and I love the way that they drew it. This is the only exhibit we have in the gallery that has a really wide range of professional levels of artists. And we do jury the exhibit. Student work can be accepted. There is some student work in the gallery now in this exhibit, but we don't designate which pieces are professional, which ones are students, because if a piece is good enough art to pass the committee approval, then we feel it merits being in the summer exhibit. And it also helps those students that do get accepted in the show 
to professionally show and exhibit their work and it's again part of helping students develop their professionalism and portfolio. The people that vote, we have slips of paper and so they vote on a number scale for the pieces and our submissions, um, we put notices at the Paramount Art District, um, mnartists.org is a website that we always post it on. And so we get the word out around the Twin Cities, the Metroplex. Um, we usually have 70 to 80 entries of which we select about 25 to 26 pieces of art. Um, and in the exhibit, you'll see there's some three-dimensional ceramic pieces and just a huge variety of pieces of art. But we can tell by the number of entries that go come, that we receive for this exhibit just the excitement of it. So I think, again, that speaks for the professionalism and the excitement of having a summer juried exhibit. I mean, I definitely think it's valuable. I think it's great to see just that sense of expression. Um, you know, I was telling my friends, even as we were looking at it, that I believe we have a, a creator God, and that means his creatures are meant to create. And so if you see things like this, it's just a representation of that. So I enjoy it. I think it tells a lot about people, and so, yeah, I, I love it. Art has never been one of my strong suits, but that was a lot of beautiful art. Enough about me. We'll have more for you after the break. How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. You could have done a little what? better. What? Come on! You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. I wouldn't have been at this ceremony if I hadn't been at this ceremony first. Unfortunately, nearly 30% of U.S. high school students aren't making it to graduation. And every one of us, every parent, every friend, and neighbor, has the responsibility to provide the support and encouragement they need to make it through. Because we all need to see a lot more of these pictures. Turning a 20-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. When the people of Haiti were hit by the massive earthquake, the people of America and the world came to their aid. President Clinton and I have seen firsthand the power of your contributions at work. The Clinton Bush Haiti Fund is on the ground, funding programs that create jobs, teach skills, and assist local businesses. Please continue to help us help the people of Haiti so they can rebuild and thrive. Thank, Thank you. Go now to ClintonBushHaitiFund.org or text QUAKE to 2222 to give $10. Welcome back to SESU Local. The granite quarries are unique to St. Cloud. There's so much to do. Rock climbing, mountain biking, fishing, swimming, and of course, jumping off cliffs. Talk about a good time. You know, I've always wanted to try rock climbing and things like that. The scenery over there looks amazing. Hopefully next summer I can check it out. Let's take a look. <laughs> Quarry Park is really the, the hub of risk recreation or adventure recreation in central Minnesota. You can do a number of various activities that really you can't find anywhere else. One would be scuba diving uh, in granite quarries. We have four designated quarries that you can scuba dive in. We have uh, 
probably seven different quarries that you can do uh, trout fishing in where we stock trout every year. That'd be rainbow trout. We have ledges that we allow you to rock climb on. Uh, a rock climbing permit's required. And it's an annual permit, doesn't cost anything extra. And along with that, we have mountain bike uh, trails within the park, uh, about two and a half miles of them with technical zones that, that you can injure yourself a dozen different ways on by uh, riding them but the mountain bikers love them. Another activity we have here is, you know, in the winter is cross-country skiing. We have the longest lighted cross-country ski trails in the state of Minnesota at about 4.3 miles. And the lighting allows us to keep the park open till about 11 o'clock at night in the winter, which has been famously popular because people are working until you know, late hours of the day and they still want to get some, some skiing in. And what are you going to do when it's dark? There are about 22 different quarries throughout the site. Uh, some of the quarries are only about 12 feet deep and then there are others that are up to 116 feet deep. I just like to come out here, um, the environment's always fun, uh, a lot of college kids and stuff uh, jumping into the water. This park is a legend and uh, my dad told me about it and then they made it a park so now it's like real nice and clean. And we allow people to jump but we just inform them that there are underwater hazards beneath some of the ledges. We try to make this an interpretive park, a recreation park, an educational park. You know, not just for, for youth and young adults, but for people of all ages. We try to make the, uh, everything accessible so that despite your, your physical ability, you can still get to uh, a rock quarry and, and fish and see the scenery. For anyone that can make it this winter, there's cross country skiing. Thank you, and that's the end of our show. Thanks for tuning in to SCSU Local, bringing you local news and events. Be sure to tune in next week for more exciting footage. To hear these stories again, YouTube SCSU Local. The 9-11 Memorial will honor my partner and the officers who responded that morning. It's for my brother. And my 343 brothers who didn't make it. It's about hope for the future. So we always remember September 11th. For my husband who never came home. And the first responders who saved my life. This shows the world that we can rebuild. That we are united and that we are strong because the best of humanity can overcome the worst hate. It's for all the heroes like my dad. This year, the National September 11th Memorial opens in New York City. Join us to honor, remember, and reunite. To learn more or to reserve your visit, go to 911memorial.org. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. 
saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Turning a 20-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Let's go! Did you know that getting up and getting active for just 60 minutes a day is all it takes to help you get stronger, look better, and feel great? Or that fresh fruits and veggies aren't just healthier and crunchier, they can taste better too? Eating better and getting more active is easier than you think. Yeah! Keep watching for some fun and easy ways to discover the magic of healthy living in your life. America, let's get healthy together! My name is Fernanda. I'm the wife of a teacher. Budget cuts affected my husband's salary, so I'm picking up some part-time work. We're doing everything we can to make sure our kids eat today. Tomorrow, I just don't know. Fernanda, how'd I do? Well, I usually fold the underwear first. I meant the acting, but good to know. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. I first started skating with my friend. He had an extra board, and then he just gave it to me, and I've been skating ever since. Well, when I don't learn a trick, and I have my mind set on something, and I'm not getting what I want, I just keep going for it until I get it right. She didn't go to college, so she wants me to experience that whole thing. And so I could end up getting, like, a good job. Ah! I think to get into college, I'll have to be determined. Just like when I want to get a new trick. And skating's helped me realize I've got what it takes. In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the US Open twice, one in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Life's this hard, it's no wonder 7,000 students drop out every school day. Visit BoostUp.org and help kids in your community stay in school. Did you know that getting up and getting active for just 60 minutes a day is all it takes to help you get stronger, look better, and feel great? Or that fresh fruits and veggies aren't just healthier and crunchier, they can taste better too? Eating better and getting more active is easier than you think. Yeah! Keep watching for some fun and easy ways to discover the magic of healthy living in your life. America, let's get healthy together! Woo!